All righty. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our mobile app academy, where we show you how to build mobile apps on the ServiceNow platform. Uh, my name is David Aha, and I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow. And I want to give a warm welcome to everyone joining us live this morning, um, afternoon, or evening. If you are joining us live, uh, let us know where you're joining in from and who you are. And I'm seeing uh, some familiar people that are joining us, so welcome back. Um, if you're brand new to using our new mobile apps at ServiceNow, definitely let us know in the chat as well. And then hopefully you guys can see my screen. Feel free to send in the chat if you can't see my screen. Uh, I might be having some technical issues, but I think we should be okay. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, we love you know getting lots of insight from all of you, whether it's from here or from mobile community. And uh, we like to put together these mobile app academy sessions based on what we hear and you know what you want to learn more about. So there's gonna be a lot of learnings uh, and we host these sessions every two weeks. And uh, this week, we'll be taking another deep dive on mobile hierarchy and explaining the backend tables involved when building mobile outside of mobile studio. You know, we get we have a lot of asks to go over the New York hierarchy concepts, uh, things like, you know, what is a master item? What is an item stream and how are they related to each other? You know, how do I navigate list and forms to build mobile when mobile studio has issues? You know, these are very common questions that we're constantly hearing from you. And so I wanna to spend today's session doing a deep dive on the mobile hierarchy and some of the tips and tricks to make sure that, you know, we all have a good understanding of it end to end. And then next week, we'll be showing you how to build uh, an advanced and custom mobile app from scratch outside of mobile studio. So we're gonna take the skills that we learned today and we're actually gonna build an app from scratch end to end uh, next week using the Now platform. Um, and next week will also, you know, involve some of the best practices uh, when configuring mobile using that platform as well. And if you have any questions throughout today's uh, uh, presentation, feel free to send them over in the Q&A section of Zoom. Uh, and then at the end of the presentation, we'll circle back and address them. So without a further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. I'm gonna take a quick look at our chat real quick, just to make sure you guys can see my screen. Um, Q&A. Don't see any comments at the moment. So hopefully, yes, I'll do a share one more time just to make sure. Okay, if you guys can't see my screen, uh, please send it in the Q&A. Uh, that way it alerts to me that you, can, you can't see it. Um, more chat. Oh, okay, perfect. Looks like you guys can see my screen. Alrighty, so, um, so let's go ahead and get started with a deep dive on the mobile hierarchy. Uh, again, this is just review, uh, but if you're not already familiar, remember that starting in New York, we had a schema change going from Madrid to New York. And in order to introduce a lot of new features that we brought over uh, from New York, like applet launchers, UI sections, and global search, we had to retire some of the old mobile tables and we introduced a bunch of new ones. So to help explain this new hierarchy, we're gonna start with this kind of lucid chart diagram. And what I'm gonna do is actually have this PowerPoint um, and I'll reference it um, throughout my presentation. And as I go through this diagram, I'm gonna show you how to access the tables on uh, outside of uh, Mobile Studio on the Now platform. And you know what the configurations to those tables will look like um, on the back end. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So at the very top of our diagram, you can see that, uh, that we have our native clients. Uh, and as you already know, um, as of New York, there are three mobile clients on the new mobile platform, ServiceNow Agent, Now Mobile, and Mobile Onboarding. And for any configuration that you make inside of Mobile Studio or outside of Mobile Studio on the Now platform, you need to specify which client that you would like to build inside of. Um, whenever you, you build a new report or what we like to call an applet um, or, whether, or you wanna build a landing page, which we call applet launchers, uh, it would register on your mobile device or it won't register on your mobile device until you specifically point it uh, to the client that you want, whether it's agent, now mobile or onboarding. So from the native clients, um, we have the navigation bar. Um, so as I go through these hierarchy, each slide will have a number on it. So you can reference it uh, where I'm speaking to. And uh, each slide will have a picture of the mobile app too. So you have an idea of how each component plays a part in configuring the mobile app. Okay. so. On the back end, um, when you start building mobile, you start with the navigation table. And on our instance, uh, let me go and show you 
what this looks like. If I look up mobile, uh, you'll notice that there is a quick menu for both now mobile app as well as system menu. Um, and so these are, uh, you can think of them as quick bookmarks that you can access your most commonly used backend tables on the now platform. Uh, it doesn't have every table here, but most of the things that you need to do to build mobile are accessible here. Also notice uh, there's a difference between the menu options under system mobile uh, as well as now mobile. Um, now mobile has a filter on it to show you only the now mobile components, while system mobile, um, it has all the mobile components across all three apps or both agent, now mobile, and mobile onboarding. So for example, if you wanted to open an Apple launcher, you wanted it to open it specifically for now mobile, you can find it here. But if you wanted to find an app launcher from one of your three other, two other clients, you would open it up under system mobile, right? Um, also, uh, you know, when I'm configuring using the now platform, my two most used bookmarks are the applets and applet launchers. Uh, here, you'll be able to access most of your configurations. Um, so back on our navigation bar, what we're going to do is we're going to look up uh, navigation bar under system mobile to start our hierarchy discussion. Okay. Um, so here you, you'll see that I have uh, a few um, options here. I'm going to delete this project status because it's not actually supposed to be here. This is a custom instance, but just imagine you can't see that right now. Um, but you're going to see just three clients when you at, are on your New York instance. You're going to see mobile agent, mobile onboarding, and now mobile. And these indicate to you uh, as the three clients that are available um, uh, to use from. Uh, and so on the back end, whenever you're building on any one of these clients, you need to specify the navigation here, whether it's to build on mobile agent or now mobile or onboarding. When you're inside a mobile studio, it's much easier, right? You have, uh, when you build an applet, you would just go to the navigation bar and you would specify, this is where I want to build my applet. But this is what it looks like on the now platform on the back end. So if I click into uh, one of these, let's say I click into now mobile. Here, it will bring me to my navigation tabs. And I think these are pretty straightforward. So, um, you know, uh, on my mobile screen on my PowerPoint or navigation bar. You can see that I have uh, five navigation tabs at the bottom of the screen. So once the native client is selected, you start configuring your collections of navigation tabs for your end user. And with the navigation tab, you can quickly open up an applet or an applet launcher, right? So um, out of the box on now mobile, you have home, you have services and information, notifications and settings. Each one of those are applets or sorry, each one of those are applet launchers, which is which are landing pages. Um, and those are the five that come out of the box. If I wanted to, I can also customize it so that they open up uh, an applet instead. So it directly launches into that applet without having to go into a applet launcher. And um, the order of your navigation tabs are totally configurable. So each of these navigation tabs, um, uh, you can order on the platform uh, on now mobile. So let me show you where I would do that. Um, you can see that I have home services, information, notifications, and settings. I have a custom one that I created, but I hit it. It's currently hidden. That's why you can't see it on the app itself. Let me go and actually log into the now mobile app so you can see what I'm talking about. If I refresh, you're going to see home services, information, notifications. And if you wanted to sort the order, you would set the order here. Right now, home is at 10, service is 20, 30, and this is kind of the order that we have. All right, so that's what we have for navigation tabs. Um, oh, also, if you have more than five tabs, you're actually going to see a more tab that pops up here. So if I actually turn this live webinar uh, tab and I were to set it to active, we'll click save. We'll actually um, Let's also set the order of this live webinar to 60. Um, da, 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 da. Let's change the order from empty. Looks like it's going to want me to jump into that scope. So let's jump into the live webinar scope. Live webinar. It's called live webinar test. 
And then if I set the order, oh no, what's the scope called? This scope is called live webinar test. Okay. And then if I go back and do a refresh. Oh, you know what? Sorry, the scope is actually, so in order to configure the order, I need to jump into normal app screens and applet launcher scope. So let's find that service now. Mobile app screens. App screens. Oh, here it is. I'll jump into that scope and now I can set the order. That's a pod. Record isn't dealing with the service now. It's been launched. Okay, sorry. Let's now jump into DH Live Webinar. Live Webinar test. There we go. Okay, I was in the wrong scope all along. So the scope was actually DH Live Webinar, not Live Webinar test. Now I can change the order. So if I set the order to 70, we'll go and click save. We'll go back out. Um, it's currently active. And now in order for me to see my uh, navigation bar in the mobile app, I'll have to log out and log back in. So anytime you make changes to the navigation bar tabs, you have to log out and log back in in order to save those changes. So let's log out real fast. We'll go back into mobile team. We'll log into our instance. Give it a second to load. And now you see um, I have four navigation tabs, one from uh, home, services, information, notifications. And then because I have more than five tabs, the last two end up being on the more tab, right? So now I can see my settings in live webinar on the more. So that's navigation bar tabs and how you can configure the order and what happens when you have more than five tabs, right? Okay. So what we want to go into next are applet launchers. So if you want to customize any of the pre-built out of the box workflows, this is usually where you start on the applet launcher itself. So on my mobile screen on the PowerPoint, the navigation tabs you see are for home, services, information. All of these are out of the box for your now mobile uh, app. And, um, and they are configured as app launchers, uh, which serve as your home screens or your landing pages. And they contain all the applets or reports that your end users want to see. Um, and the applet launcher itself contains a configurable header, which kind of uh, includes that Hello David title screen, as well as the header icon you see on the top right, as well as your global search. That's your um, header. And um, you also have your UI sections. And each UI sections are indicated by my task, my request. It's how you visualize your applets. And then you also have your quick actions, which is that green button at the bottom right. If I tap on it, it would execute an action really quickly from your landing page. So in order to access your Apple launchers, let's go back into my instance. Um, and we are going to look up Apple launcher. from system mobile, or we can jump into app launcher here. Um, we're gonna click into the home page. Um, and this is essentially where you would configure app launcher on the backend. Um, here you can uh, configure, if I jump into the scope, currently into DH Live Webinar, so I need to jump into ServiceNow app screens and app launchers. And so let's jump into the scope. And now that I'm in the scope, now I can configure all of these uh, fields here, the header, the body, all your UI sections, and your quick actions. So this is where you would configure the stuff on the back end. Um, also note that you can also um, set roles and enable offline here as well. You can, of course, you can do it on, on mobile studio, but here on the back end, here you would set the roles and 
enable offline. If you ever have any issues in enabling offline uh, on Mobile Studio, the first thing I would check is go into the backend table, which is at the launcher here. And I want to make sure that this check mark is uh, checked. And that's kind of a quick way to troubleshoot whether offline was turned on or not, uh, if you're having issues in configuring it inside of Mobile Studio. Right, so best practice when you're troubleshooting any configuration, always check the backend tables and see that they're truly represent, representing what you see inside of Mobile Studio. And of course, sometimes we'll run into bugs and not, uh, whatnot. Um, uh, and uh, this is a bug that we fixed uh, in the past. Sometimes it wouldn't sync correctly. Um, but yeah, that's kind of best practice of troubleshooting. All right, so now that we're going from Apple Launcher, we jump into the Apple Launcher header. Um, so if you take a look at the mobile screen, um, you'll see that the header controls the title that says, hello, David, the global search that lets you look up services, articles, or people, um, as well as the header function at the top right of your screen. And that header function, if you tap into the icon, it'll actually, oh, excuse me, it'll actually launch you uh, into your user profile. So let me show you what that looks like on the instance. Um, so the title is here, the header function is here, and your global search is here. Um, uh, I would encourage any time that you configure the header uh, that you do it inside of Mobile Studio because it's a lot easier to configure it inside of there. But it's good to know that, you know, where you would access it on the back end. Um, I want to show you this inside of Mobile Studio real, really quickly. The interface is slightly different when you're configuring the header um, in Mobile Studio. And it kind of makes uh, configuring the types of headers much easier. Uh, you're, you're actually going to see two options, one for generic and one for home, which you don't see here, but you do see inside of Mobile Studio. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to jump into Mobile Studio really quickly. And I'm going to create a new scoped application really quickly. So remember, you know, the out of the box components and workflows that are pre-built for now mobile are not configurable inside of Mobile Studio. Um, however, if you were to build new uh, net new components from scratch or created uh, net new flows from scratch, they then become configurable inside of Mobile Studio. We are working on improving this experience in future releases, uh, but that's just how it is for now mobile. Uh, all your out of the box agent experiences are configurable inside of Mobile Studio. It's just that now mobile has uh, uh, now mobile is kind of just the one. Uh, app that you can't configure, as well as onboarding. Out of the box stuff for now mobile and onboarding uh, are not configurable inside of Mobile Studio unless you create net new components. And that's the reason why I wanted to show you today just how important it is to understand the backend tables if you wanted to customize anything out of the box. <clears throat> so the skills and learnings that you take today uh, will uh, heavily help you with your implementations anytime you want to customize stuff on your now mobile or onboarding workflows. So let's go ahead and create this uh, new scope app real quick. Uh, we'll call this Live Webinar 3. And then we'll click Create. Actually, let's call this 3 Live Webinar. And then we'll click Create. <clears throat> uh, we'll just give it a admin role, just to make it simple. I want to create a mobile application. And then I'm just going to use the internet table for simplicity. But just know that you can select any tables that you want, and you can actually create new tables from this using Guided App Creator. Um, we'll click Done with Tables, and then we'll click Start. And then I'm kind of rushing through this because uh, if you attended any of the past live webinars, uh, you can actually see some of the recorded sessions we already have on YouTube on our ServiceNow community YouTube. Um, you can actually check out some of the recordings that we've already done on Guided App Creator and how to uh, build apps from scratch using it. So I can review my changes here, and then I'll click Create. And then we'll click Done with Apps, and then we'll go straight into Mobile Studio. And then we'll launch into it. OK, so now you know, Guided App Creator it automatically created an app launcher for me. So if I just open up this app launcher, you already associated the incident applet uh, to this app launcher. But here, I want you guys to actually look at the header, which is different than uh, the now platform. You can see that header type, you have two options, one for generic and one for 
uh, home. So the first type, generic, these are not designed to be used as home pages. The title is a static string that you can define. Um, and then you can also enable uh, the include icon here to display the top right icon on the header. So if I show you what I'm talking about, it's going to be this icon here, which you have an option to enable. Um, and then the destination, you would actually have to associate uh, an applet to it. So any applet that you want uh, your users to quickly open up, you have that option. <clears throat> and then the second type we have is home. So home type headers uh, are meant for your landing pages. You know, uh, your home pages, uh, it's kind of usually the first applet launcher that you have associated to your app. Um, here, so uh, this will actually pull from the sys user table to display the full name of the logged in user. So right now my user uh, is just David. I don't have a last name associated to it. Uh, I don't think I put in a, a last name, but uh, what it does is whatever text that you set, um, it's going to say, it's going to take the status string and then it's also going to put the variable behind it, which is your full name. So if I say hello, um, it's going to take the sys user uh, name, which is just David because I don't have a last name. It's going to say, hello, David. And that's what I would expect. Um, and then you can also have an employee profile here as well. Um, I think right now it's expecting me to put in an employee profile. Uh, so let's go ahead and create an employee profile real quick just to show you what this would look like. So I'm going to speed through this uh, configuration. So I'll create an applet. We'll call this employee profile. Uh, we'll give it an icon and color. Uh, we'll select the employee directory applet. We'll click create new. This applet is going to require a data item. So we'll create a new data item. We'll call this employee profile. We'll select the sys user table. User. Sys user. There it is, sys user. Oh, come on, sys user. There it is. And then I'll leave the queries blank. And we'll click Save. So now that I have my data item, I just have to associate that data item back on my applet. Um, and then we'll select some fields. So uh, this uses a fixed uh, pattern. Uh, which your E1 is going to be an avatar. So let's go ahead and look up uh, avatar. And then we can put in some fields here. Let's put full name. Uh, maybe department. And maybe location or something. And then we'll go and click save. Okay. So now I have an employee profile applet. Um, I can have a profile screen as well. So let's go ahead and just replicate the fields. Click save. And then Automatized form screen. Uh, we're actually going to need a parameter, I believe, as well. Yes. So when you associate an employee profile applet, it's actually expecting a parameterized um, employee profile. So we're actually going to need to add a parameter to the data item. So let's go ahead and open up our data item again. And if any of this, any of these concepts are unfamiliar to you, I would definitely check out the mobile apps. I'm kind of skimming through some of these concepts because. They have been previously uh, mentioned um, during uh, our previous uh, live webinars. So I'm going to create a new parameter for user. We're going to select uh, sysid and we'll map it to user and we'll click save. And now on our employee profile, I can now map my item parameter to my UI parameter. So if I create a new UI parameter, 
call this user. We'll click save. And then we'll map our item parameter to our URL parameter. And we'll click save. Okay. So now um, our employee profile is now parameterized. Now I should be able to select it from this employee profile here. Let's go ahead and click refresh. Apple launcher, home, oops, form screen. Oh, you know what? It's actually just expecting a form screen. Um, what I created just now was a, a list, a parameterized list screen. Um, uh, da, 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 da. So, uh, I don't, have, okay. So uh, to fix this, basically what I would need to do is, let me show you what happened. So if I look up this employee profile just now, um, and I look up employee profile, this was actually a list screen. Oh no, it's a form screen. What did I just create? Three live webinar. Right, so I created a list screen um, and it's trying to associate this list screen. But in order for it to work, you would actually just need to associate this form screen here. Um, and that's why the list, uh, the values aren't showing up. Um, okay, but I'm gonna go, just because we're running out of time, I'm gonna go and skip that configuration. I need to move on to the rest of the hierarchy. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, I'll use the rem remainder of the time to finish that configuration. Um, but I think the most essential piece that I wanted to show you was the header options between generic and home. So that's where you would uh, find it and change your Apple Launcher configs here. <clears throat> okay, so um, I so for home, um, basically, if you wanted it to say hello, David, uh, full name it would just change the text here. Uh, and then it would automatically pull in the full name. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to global search. Um, so uh, for global search, you have the ability to search up services, articles, and people. Um, and this configuration can only be done on the now platform. And so uh, let me show you how you would do that. So on our instance, if I look up our Apple launcher on now mobile, if I click into the home page, and then I switch into the scope. This is where you would control the search configuration. So in New York, we only um, allow you to use our out of the box search config to be able to search up catalogs, knowledge, and people. But in Orlando, uh, just know that you are able to customize whatever table uh, or whatever table that you want to search. So that's coming in Orlando. Um, but in New York, you can only search up these three, right? Um, so that's where you find global search on the platform UI. Next, let's move on to quick actions. So quick actions is also still part of our header, right? Um, so if I show you this on my instance, uh, quick actions are at the bottom here of our Apple launchers. And you can see that I have a bunch of quick actions already that I've made from previous uh, webinars. So if I open up this plus icon, you can see all of my Apple launchers that are associated. If you wanna see how uh, these are configured, I will check out the uh, ServiceNow Community YouTube channel, uh, which I do a deep dive on how to create these from scratch. Okay, so uh, moving on, UI sections. So UI sections were still in the Apple launcher header. The last, uh, and it's also the last piece of this. So UI sections control how applets are displayed on your app launcher. So if I go back to the app launcher on our instance, and then we go to this body section here, this is uh, where I would control which applets that I want displayed on my landing page. Um, and I wanna create a new UI section just to show you that there's a, an option for media section that you wouldn't be able to access on mobile studio. So let's go ahead and jump into the scope for ServiceNow mobile app screens. Um, uh, 
And then we're going to refresh this page now that we're into the scope. Okay, so once you're into the scope um, and you refresh the page, you should be able to see insert a new row. Um, and we're gonna create a new row now. So uh, we're gonna create a new UI section. If I click new, Uh, we'll give this media section a name. Let's just call it, uh, uh, what kind of UI section do we want to create? Let's create one for instant. And then we'll click save. Okay. Once you've created that uh, se uh, section name, we'll click into it. Or we'll actually save before we click into it, just to make sure it saves. And then we'll click into the section. Um, and then, uh, actually, instead of clicking into it, we're going to want to change the class. So here, you can control whether you create a icon section, an item section, or a media section. These are the three sections that we have in New York. Uh, if you're familiar with Mobile Studio, the only two that you can create are icon sections and item sections. So just to give you an idea of what these uh, sections are, um, going back to our PowerPoint, uh, Icon sections. Um, actually, do I have an example of an icon section? Oh, here we go. Oh, no. Uh, no examples. Let's see. We'll start with item sections then. So, item sections display card views of your records from a list, you know, a list applet. And these records can be, you know, vertical or horizontal. If you see on our PowerPoint screen, these are item sections that are going horizontally. And you can kind of scroll in between them and click directly into the record from your Apple Launcher. Um, and then icon sections are just these circular uh, icons that you can tap into and each one represent an applet. Um, if you see my task, this is one applet and it will show you uh, your records in this kind of square format. But when you use an icon section, you can actually have uh, multiple applets uh, in one section in which you can tap into. And then uh, one section that you might not be familiar with are uh, media sections. Um, and media sections, they kind of act like uh, campaigns or uh, banners or even uh, articles that you'd want your users to access. And I'll actually configure one for you really quickly just to show you what's possible. And then you can actually ignore chart sections because chart sections are available in Orlando. Um, and this is something that you can uh, do to show native dashboards um, in Orlando. But the three that are present in New York are icon, item, and media. So let me go and show you what a media section looks like now. I'm going to change the class of this section to media. And I'm actually going to rename this section to uh, banner. Because I'm going to create a ServiceNow banner on our Now mobile app. Um, Let's go and save, and then we'll jump into this real fast. And then we'll rename the title. So let's call this banner. Okay, so this is what a media section looks like. Um, I can put a headline on it. Let's go and say, uh, welcome to ServiceNow. And then the text could be something like, uh, click to learn more. And then here I can either attach an image or a video. So just to quickly pull an image, uh, I'm going to look up ServiceNow on Google. And then we'll take a quick screenshot of an image. Um, let's go ahead and take, we'll take this one. I'll take a quick screenshot. Actually, let's take this one. We'll take a quick screenshot of this. Okay, we'll go back into our instance. Um, let's rename this screenshot to ServiceNow. Okay, and then we're actually going to add this as an attachment to this media section. Um, recent, here's that image. We'll click open, give it a second to load. 
Okay, now I should, in the image section, I can actually select the image itself. ServiceNow banner. Um, and then I can click save. So what I'm expecting right now is uh, you'll see that ServiceNow banner on the very top here, uh, right below our header. Um, and it's gonna have a headline that says, welcome ServiceNow. And then uh, if I want, I can actually configure in fu a function that when they click, uh, when they tap on click to learn more, it'll actually take them to the website or wherever that I want to send them. Um, so uh, in order to do that, I would have to create a, uh, uh, a URL function. So let's go and create that really quickly. Um, and we're gonna do this inside of Studio real fast because it's much faster. We'll create a smart button create new and we'll name this smart bun uh, open service now website the type will be URL uh, it'll be global because it doesn't require context um, say more for the label and then URL link let's go on and open up service now official website Copy and paste this, whoops, don't want this page. Let's go to company. Okay, we'll take this link and then we'll put this link in the URL link, save. So now I have a smart binder that will navigate me to the ServiceNow website. I'll go back into the now platform uh, and I'm going to create a function instance. So uh, we're gonna create a new function instance and a function instance is basically where is uh, uh, your action location, right? When you create an action, you have to put it somewhere and uh, for it to understand uh, where it is that you're opening it from. So we're gonna create a new function instance for this media section. We'll call this uh, open website, service now website. When you create a uh, function instance, it's always going to be the applet launcher for the parent table um, because this function lives it is going to be accessible from your applet launcher. So we're going to select applet launcher for parent table, and the parent is the applet launcher itself, um, and the applet launcher that it's going to be on is going to be the home screen. So we're going to look up home for the parent. Home, home page, yes. Um, and then the function is the one that we just created, which is uh, service now. Open service now website, and then we'll give it a label. Um, learn more, and then the location is media section. So this is specifically a function for your media section. And so that's why the location is media section. And then we'll go ahead and click submit. So now if I click update, I think I have all the information I need. If I wanted to control the visibility of this, I can do so here, uh, but I'll leave it as is. So we'll click update. Okay, and then we'll go back to my Apple launcher. Go to our home page to make sure it's saved. And now I have this media section for the banner. Um, and I actually want this to be the first UI section um, on my mobile app. So I want it before my task. And currently my task uh, is currently first. So we're gonna put this actually as one. Um, I think I have to switch into the scope for this. So what's the scope for my to-dos? The scope for my to-dos is uh, service now mobile app my to do's so let's switch into that and then we'll change the order to uh, we'll go back let's change the order my to do's to one okay and then for the banner we'll set the order 
which I'll have to jump back into the scope for applets, app screens and applet launcher. So we'll save real fast to make sure it's saved. Oops. Oh, uh, whoops. I accidentally clicked insert. Um, oops, I'll fix that later. Okay. Uh, did it save? Oh, my to do's is still zero. Let's change this to one real fast. My to do's. To do's, what is it? My to do's. Set the order to one. Right now, this is conflicting with my request, but just to speed up, I'm going to leave it like that. But essentially, what we're trying to do is get the banner to show up as first. So now, if I click save, oh, it looks like it automatically saves. Or do I need to save in? Apple Launcher. If I click into this, I should set. I should be able to set the order as well. Order. It's fine. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Uh, it's not saving, it seems like. Let's see. Let's do it one more time. One. And then. Hmm. That's interesting. If I click into I. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Okay. So this is where you set the order. So open the record. We'll click save. Order one. Update. Okay, that's better. Okay, now I need to switch into the banner scope, which was Apple Launchers, App Screens and Apple Launcher, and we'll set the banner to zero to show up first. And now we'll save this as well. Okay. All right, so now if I refresh my mobile app, I should see my banner on top. There we go. And now we see Welcome to Service Now. If I click on it, it'll take me to the website. So as you can see, this is kind of a, a way to kind of brand your app. You know, if you can, you can create uh, ca campaign screens or uh, links to where you just want to open up or, you know, any information or videos, links, uh, ways for users to kind of engage with your landing page. And it kind of makes it look more like a home screen as well. Um, so that's something that you can do on the now platform that you can't do in, uh, inside of mobile studio. And again, all these things we're hoping to bring into Mobile Studio over time uh, is just in New York. This is something that you have to do outside of Mobile Studio. Okay, so now let's, uh, that's UI sections. That was kind of a long example of a UI sections. So let's go ahead and jump into the next thing for applets. So um, applets you should already kind of be familiar with, right? So uh, anytime you create an applet, you have to associate it to an app launcher. Uh, so that it shows up within your app itself. Um, just to show you this on the platform UI, uh, when I open up an app launcher for now mobile, and this is kind of where you would associate your applets. It's within the sections themselves. So if I click into item section, uh, this is one applet. I would just, uh, expect that, see destination screen, this is a my request applet and this is how you associate it on the back end. Um, an important thing to know for item sections is you actually have different options on that platform that you don't see inside mobile studio. Things like max item display count, hide header, uh, display title. These are all things that you can, control, you can control if you access the backend tables. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show for applets. Let's move on to item stream segments. Okay, so item stream segments, I'm not going to configure this, um, but uh, something that you might possibly not know is similar to a form screen. So if I click into, I jump back into my mobile device. If I click into my request, right? This takes you to the detail screen or the form screen. A form screen can contain multiple screens. Uh, I guess it's, it's confusing when I call it a form screen. It's, maybe we could just call it a form 
and a form contains both this details segment as well as this activity stream uh, segment. Um, and you would normally associate forms having multiple segments, but if I had a list applet, for example, now I see a list of all of my requests, I can actually have a segment, uh, additional segment on this uh, list screen itself. So if I wanted to see you know, my open request and my closed re request, similar to what we were showing on this PowerPoint, this is something that you can do. And this is actually controlled uh, and configurable on the uh, Now platform. So um, if I open up a applet, let's open up Active Instance. Um, active Instance. Uh, we'll make sure that this is a list screen. This Active Instance, I'm expecting it to only have one item stream segment because there is only one segment. If you have more than one segment, item stream segment, you would actually see um, this tab right here, uh, which you can control uh, if you wanted to show different types of information. Um, and these can actually pull from the same table or from different tables. So right now in this example on the PowerPoint, I'm actually pulling uh, my open instance on one segment on the list, sc uh, list screen and then uh, a closed uh, instance, which is also pulling from the same table. Um, so you can kind of control your queries uh, all from the same screen. So that's something that you can do on the Now platform. Okay, so that's item stream segments. Um, uh, to explain item streams, uh, this is where, uh, this is the container that controls your data item, and the data item controls the source of your data, and you can actually associate more than one item stream to an item streams uh, segment. Uh, to kind of display records from multiple tables, like I was saying before. Uh, if you take a look at our mobile screen on the PowerPoint, you can see that uh, on this single list screen, um, I'm pulling uh, incidents from the incident table, or sorry, I'm pulling, yeah, I'm pulling incidents, this record here, pulling incidents from the incident table, uh, requests from the approvals table, and then cases from the cases table. So uh, a different item stream is used for each table but it's all showing up on the same list. So that's kind of how you can use item streams to your advantage. And if I look on uh, the Now platform, if I click into the item stream segment, I would see multiple item streams here in which each one would have a different data item. Um, and I can actually show you on Now Mobile Applets launcher, I believe the out of the box has an example of this. So if I click into, um, I think my request, it's either my request or my to-dos, there's an example of one of these that uses multiple item streams. Give it a second to load. Okay. Um, if I click into the destination screen, this has one segment on the list only, but it has multiple item streams. As you can see this, um, my request, if I show you on my mobile device, I click see all, you know, it's pulling incidents. It's also pulling rhythms. Um, you know, all these are coming from different tables and it's because it's configuring, uh, different item stream segments or sorry, different item streams. You can see it's pulling from cases, HR cases, rhythms, and so forth. So that's what I, uh, item streams can do for you. Uh, moving on to the next one, we have the data item. And data item is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you specify what table that you wanna pull your records from, as well as apply any query conditions uh, on top of it. Um, moving on to the master item. So inside of an item stream contains a master item. And the master item controls your item view JSON, which controls the pattern of the data that you want to display on uh, your list screen on the card view, right? So you can see that um, if you create multiple master items, it can control different patterns uh, depending on the conditions. You take a look at our mobile screen on the PowerPoint, you can see that uh, it's controlling different fields and different ways to visualize things. Um, based on conditions. So if it's ready, 
you know, it's gonna show an image, gonna show some fields, um, or you know, if, it, if the status changed from ready to work in progress, you can actually control different fields for it to show. So that's what you can do with the master item um, uh, on the item view JSON itself. So going back on the platform UI, um, we'll actually open up the approvals applet because this has an example of it. So we'll search up applet launcher for now mobile. We'll click into homepage. Um, we'll click into my to-dos. Jump into the scope and click into the destination screen. Um, and then we'll click into item stream segment into approvals item stream. And here you can see it's using multiple master items. Depending on, you know, if it's a request, it's going to have this item view JSON uh, using, you know, this specific pattern. Um, and if it's rhythm, it's going to use a different pattern. If it's HR, it's going to use different fields and patterns. So that's what master items can do for you. If you're unfamiliar with what a master item looks like, if you click into it, um, here you would you know, select the table that you'd want. Uh, and then most importantly is the item view itself. If I open this up, here I can control the item view JSON, right? So if you know how to configure JSON, um, this is something that you can control. Um, and you can also apply UI styles, of course, if you want things to pop out and whatnot. Okay, so that's your master item. Okay, moving on to form screen. Um, so with every list applet, you also have the option to enable a form screen, which is kind of like, uh, if I have a list screen, I have multiple records. What if I want to see the details or the activity stream or a related list? Uh, then you would have to attach a form screen so that when you tap into a record, you can see those additional fields, right? So uh, on the platform UI, or on, um, sorry, the now platform, outside of mobile studio, if I uh, jump from the master item, let's say I wanted to go into the request master item, um, you're gonna see this field here called the embedded screen. And this embedded screen always has to be a form screen. So this approved request is uh, the name of a form screen or a form. So if I open up this embedded screen, you can see that this is a form screen. And within a form screen, you can contain multiple different screens, right? You can have a details, activity stream, and related list, or any other screen that you want. Um, uh, and let's say if I wanted to create, we'll jump into this real fast. Um, if I wanted to create a new segment, uh, let's actually use one of our out of the box things. Actually, we're slightly running out of time. Um, I'm not going to show you how to configure this, but it's really simple. If I jump into the scope, um, it wants me to jump into the catalog screens in the Apple Launcher scope. And then I'll do a refresh so that I can see the insert new row here. If I click this magnifying icon and click a create, a create new, here it's going to tell you all the different screen types that you can select from. I can create an activity stream, details, um, and so forth. So, you know, if I wanted to create a really quick one, activity stream, I would click OK. Um, you would fill in these fields here. You would click Submit, and then voila, you have an activity stream here. So that's what you can do with segments. Um, so from my request, if I click into this, right, this is, this is essentially what you're controlling, the details, updates, and any other uh, segments that you don't want to attach to it. Uh, best practices. Um, you'd only want to associate up to three or four segments at a time. Otherwise, it starts to look clunky on your mobile app. So we would recommend you know, uh, not configuring more than three or four segments on your form screen. Okay. And then the very last piece of this is um, your action functions, right? Uh, so how do you associate them on platform UI? And I kind of did this already for your media section, uh, but just to... Uh, scroll through this real fast. Um, in order to create a function, you would first create a function um, here, uh, right, a function. I'll select function from system mobile, create a new function. Uh, it could be, you know, create a new record or update a record. Um, but once you have that uh, function created, right, it has the action item, 
um, the action item is associated to the action function. The next thing that you would have to do is um, associate it to a specific location. And a table that you're probably not familiar with is the function instance table. I kind of slightly showed this earlier. So if I look up sys underscore sg function instance dot list, again, that's sys sg function instance dot list. This, uh, whoops, sorry, uh, wrong table name. Sys sg button instance dot list. Again, that's sys sg button instance dot list. This is where you control your function instances. Um, and so if I show you inside of Mobile Studio, right? Mobile Studio makes it easy for you so that when you go into an applet and you tap, you know, functions, you have the option for like top menu and swipe. And then on the form screen, you have options uh, for top menu. And in the body, you also have field functions and footer functions. But there are other functions that you can actually um, create as well, depending on your use case. And some of those things are uh, accessible on the back end, like how I created a function for your media section. And that's only possible um, uh, outside of Mobile Studio. So if you look at the different location types, you have trailings, uh, left swipe, right swipe, field functions, list items, uh, footer, header, quick action, the media section. So I'm not gonna jump into each one of those uh, locations uh, because we actually have a document where uh, we show you in depth how to configure each one of these. So recently uh, on mobile community, we posted a, a couple of new content types. So if you look in future content, there is a link for mobile migration and getting started guides for Orlando. Although we did specifically create these uh, for the Orlando release, the concepts are all still the same. And these are actually very um, uh, valuable for New York customers as well. So if you open up the mobile implementation steps for Orlando, and I open up this PDF, all this information is gonna be super valuable for you to understand um, you know, how to get started using Mobile Studio, what you can do inside of Mobile Studio versus what you can do outside of Mobile Studio. You know, what's the purpose of guided app creator? You know, when do I start building mobile studio versus when do I need to consider uh, things I need to build outside mobile studio? And kind of walks you through the hierarchy of it as well, kind of like what we did today. So this is a very in-depth uh, guidebook um, showing you all the things that are possible and kind of the best practices around it. And if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, um, there is, uh, so basically I took the PowerPoint and I, uh, documented and uh, written in a word format and it kind of talks about all the things we talked about today. Uh, if we scroll all the way down to functions, associating functions. So these, this will tell you exactly uh, what screens uh, and function locations are supported, right? So if I have a top menu function, where can this go? Well, top menu function, it can be on your list screen, it can be on your map screen, or it can be on a calendar or form. So this is very useful in understanding what are all the things possible. Quick actions, you know, um, if you knew mobile for service now, you know that quick actions can only be associated to your applet launcher. And this is done on the uh, outside of mobile studio. So very informative guide. I would definitely recommend checking it out uh, uh, when implementing your mobile flows for now mobile agent or onboarding. So that kind of wraps up all the things that I want to go over today. Um, we did run out of time, but I want to spare a few minutes to talk about any questions that you might have, um, as well as uh, some of the additional training that we have here. So um, that kind of wraps up uh, all the things that I want to show you on the hierarchy deep dive. Uh, hopefully this time around, you know, with all the visualizations and walkthrough on the back end, we now have a better understanding on how to navigate and configure outside of Mobile Studio. Um, you know, getting comfortable with the platform UI is extremely important when troubleshooting because there are many times when you, know, you might either run into a mobile studio bug or realize that a configuration isn't supported inside of mobile studio, but rather configured on uh, the now platform itself. Um, so that's the reason uh, why you know, the guidebook, the implementation guidebook will be very useful to you. It pretty much gives you an overview on how to get started um, and things that you can do inside versus outside of mobile studio. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the Q&A now. Um, I'm gonna open up some of the questions here. So it's like we have a few questions. Um, 
Okay, first question from Jitinder. Uh, hi, on my instance in the Apple Launcher section, I can only see Apple Launcher section class. Is there something wrong? Um, I would recommend maybe jumping into the scope um, because on the platform UI, if I look at Apple Launcher and open this up, and then I jump into an Apple Launcher, you should be able to see um, this Apple Launcher section, right? You should be able to see the order, the section, and then the class. And then if you don't see class, maybe click on this setting uh, gear and make sure that class is brought over. Um, that's what I would recommend. Uh, and if you still don't see it, I would recommend opening up a ticket so that our support folks can jump in to make sure there's nothing wrong with your instance that was upgraded to New York. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Another question we have, can you explain how carried parameters works and how to set it up? I can't find any guides on this online. So we're actually gonna uh, do carried parameters um, in a future session. And we actually have product docs that are coming on the way. Um, it's, uh, it's been written, now we just have to release them. Uh, and it's gonna be on the Orlando product documentation. Um, uh, if you can do me a favor, can you actually make that, post that question on the mobile community site? And I will definitely follow up once the product doc link is available. Um, another question is, is it possible to use script to include reference qualifiers from the mobile app? How to catch the current dot field on the mobile uh, as in a backend form? Um, uh, I'd like to ask for you to also open up that question on mobile community. Um, I can find a mobile expert uh, to make sure to answer that question for you. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know the answer, but um, I'll definitely find someone who can answer that for you. So please open up that question on mobile community and we'll follow up. Uh, what it, on the roadmap for the ServiceNow mobile app and future releases? So if you actually set up a meeting with one of your account teams, we can actually have a roadmap discussion um, on all the things that are available in Orlando. Um, so uh, actually, if you go to mobile community, um, if you're asking particularly for uh, the roadmap for, um, for Orlando, we actually have a doc on this. Sorry, we are a couple of minutes out of uh, over time, but I'll wrap up really quickly in just the next few minutes. So if I go to mobile community, and then on the feature content, there is a link for what's new in Orlando for mobile. And it'll talk about all the new features in Orlando. Give it a second to load. Now that everyone's working from home, I'm sure that uh, there's some uh, latency issues. Okay, so here it talks about all the features. We have mobile branding, mobile application management, you know, mobile analytics, dashboards, a lot of really good things. And uh, actually at the bottom of this, it has all the relevant links uh, to product docs as well as my implementation guide and so forth. So definitely check that out. Um, and it looks like that's all the questions for today. Any other questions before we wrap up? Um, doesn't look like there's any other questions. Okay, so we'll go ahead and wrap up. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you found this session informative and helpful. You know, if you have any additional questions, um, as you learn mobile, mobile and you go through your mobile implementations and deployment, feel free to keep posting this on our mobile community, um, you know, so that we can kind of explore other configurations in future mobile app academy sessions. Um, we're gonna be having another session in two weeks and it's gonna feature one of our application developers here at ServiceNow. It's gonna be an advanced training session on how to build a mobile uh, app from scratch outside of mobile studio using the Now platform. And we'll also show you some tips and tricks uh, on some of the things you should know when building as well. So really exciting. Um, make sure to keep following our mobile community site to get the latest dates and information. And with that, I hope to see you at our next Mobile App Academy. Thank you all, and we'll hope to see you next time. Bye, everyone.